Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello out there. I hope we had a nice long weekend, but we have been back to work this week, so, which in these trying times is very good. So remember that. Now, we've talked about that no strings attached relationship or that booty call or that, you know, friends with benefits. But you know, maybe even eyeing that friend for a little while and your curiosity is just peaking because you know you've been looking for a relationship they're not dating anybody you get along great you hang out who's to say it may just work just that curiosity to think well what how's that you know will it work there are so many things out there if you've been wanting to kiss this person and get away with it there are ways to do that Uh, you can be attracted to a friend as they can be attracted to you, but you don't know that. Uh, You know, there might be some ways you can show them. So, you know, also, like, if you get in that bad relationship or you're in a relationship you're trying to get out of and you don't know how to do it without losing a friendship... That's another thing you want to talk about. But today's topic, which as if you have not figured out, is how to do just those little things. I'm just going to talk about, you know, if you're in a relationship, but ending, you know, with a friend and ending it on a positive note. I mean, there are those just, you can go to sex, see how it was, not like it, and then get up and just remain being friends. With no issues whatsoever. Kudos to you. They are out there. But then there's those where you don't want to lose them as a friendship friend. Because they are so, so much fun. And your friendship is amazing. So you don't want to lose that. There's that. But those are a little bit more difficult to get and navigate through. But we're going to start off with the good old way to steal a kiss from a friend. Oh, of course, accidentally kissing a friend. (laughs) But, I mean, we've all probably been in that situation where you are hanging out with a friend and you're very close to a friend. They're really close. You look at them as a brother or sister, but there's just that little bit more out there that you really wanted with this person because although you know probably their deepest secrets because you have been that friend and so close with this person that that is the attraction to that person and you want to know how it would be to kiss them 
you know, who's to say? They may be thinking about the same thing, but I don't know how I say it to you. And only knows. But there are some ways to get up in there and just do it. But it's accidentally. So you can get away with it. You're not walking in there uh, blindly. But if it turns into a very long and heated kiss, that means that that person really actually likes you too. And they've probably been waiting for us a time to try it themselves and you just opened up the door. Kissing is probably the way to find out first if this is what you are going to want and like too. Think about it. If you want to go to that friends with benefits, if you want to move that relationship to the next stage due to that mutual attraction. So let's get a little sneaky in here and See if those sexual desires play right in and turn that into more than a friendship. So really, how do you kiss a friend? You know, that's a one question within itself if you ask yourself that. How do you kiss them? They're your friend. You know, uh, you don't want it to get to that point where you're not going to be friends anymore because you love that. You know, your friend may be shocked or surprised. Or they may want to stay anyway. Stay away from you, sorry. We want to stay away from you. We don't want that to happen. We want the positive to happen, obviously. <laughs> so, now there's also the other side to that. Well, you just want to know what it feels like and then just worry about whatever the feelings that come out of it later. You could try this and get away with it. You got to find out firstly, you know, there are five ways to do this. It's probably a lot more that people have gotten very, very creative with. But you want to make sure in the end that after it's either going to remain a friendship or if they're into it as you are, maybe it goes a little further. So first way to do this, and this has probably happened more than once to somebody out there. Kissing a friend when you are drunk. You're out having a good old time. You're plastered a little bit. Feeling really good. Inhibition's low. And this is probably the best way to do this. I'm not saying for those of you who do not drink to go out and get hammered just to do this. Because they probably know that you don't drink and you don't get drunk. So... You're not going to get away with it. Although, looking at this from their perspective, if they're drunk and then you go up to them, I don't think you need to be drunk for that one. So, I have no, no alcohol needed. So, please do it because 10 to 1, they probably won't even remember the next day. So, they'll think something happened. They'll wonder, did this really happen? But to them, it would be a dream. So, try it when they're drunk. I mean, it's a way of finding out. It might be even be not a very good time or anything like that because it probably really kiss you sloppy. But you got to factor in these aspects of that whole wait until someone's drunk and then kissing. Okay, because uh, you got to come up with a good freaking excuse later on. Remember that. So, and it's usually go in an isolated spot or go over here. Some people probably won't even do that. They'll be out there dancing and do it and everybody can see them. Well, that is completely up to you because 10 to 1 your other friends that you've gone out with are going to tell you about it the next day, whether you want or not. And at this point, too, you're having a good old time. You're quote-unquote, accidentally kissing that friend while 
either they're drunk or you're drunk. One or the both of you are drunk, one or the other. So you've gotten away with that part. And then you start whispering in each other's ear. Still so totally acceptable and falls underneath that I was drunk riddle. <laughs> um, I mean, you get really right up close with that individual when you are under this, like I said, inhibitions are gone. And it might even go further than that. Whereas you actually go through the whole, you have that sexual fling also. So you never know. Remember, this is where under the a drunk assumption when we're trying this and probably could get away with it. Another one is playing, you know, we all know the, we used to play games when we were young, spin the bottle, ah, uh, you know, truth or dare. And that is one of the ways to accidentally kiss a friend, truth, playing truth or dare. You can, if it lands on them, or if it's their time, you could have one of your friends to you know, do it, or you could do it yourself and make it one of those uh, truth or dare, where you dare your friend to kiss you. It's out there. And, I mean, again... That you can add in that little element of alcohol where you're having, uh, playing drinking spin the bottle or drinking truth or dare. You can get, you can, I think you're put on the spot in that game and no, uh, no holes barred. So throw it out there. You're feeling good. You just did your friend. You got your kiss. And if you didn't like it, you could walk away from it. It's a game. But if you like it, do talk about it later. And see how you're going to go about it. Doesn't work? Try step number one again. K kiss your friend when they're consoling you. You had a bad day. They're consoling you. You're not... You're, have that little fakeness of, oh my god, my emotions are running high. I feel so bad about myself. And turn around that consoling you. They're looking at you deeply in your eyes. Kiss them. It's there. Have you, you know, when they're consoling you, they want to make you feel better. So they're not really going to push you away. If you're majorly depressed or you're just breaking up with someone or you had a bad day at work or did you get fired from work or whatever the case may be, you call, who do you call? You call up a friend and call up the friend you want to kiss because they come over and they'll do anything to cheer you up because they don't want you upset. You know, you're going to snuggle up. You're going to be really close to them because they're going to come over and want to give you hugs, light kisses on your forehead, tell you that you are going to be okay as you're trying to tell them that what your problem is and why you're, you know, what's going on and all of this stuff. And while they're doing that, they you are totally getting comfortable in their arms, snuggling up. And they're trying very hard to make sure that you are okay. So kiss them. You know, you're both looking into each other. They, you know, it may just lead to the bedroom. Who is to, you know, say, get a little hanky-panky in there too, and then you can find out if this is what you really want. But if it's not, you can always, you know, your excuses, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, they'll tell you that they're sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. I knew you weren't feeling well. I only came over there to console you and that's what happened. I didn't want to give it a W. But it opens up the door for other things. So you can either say, that's fine. 
I enjoyed it or no pro you know, make them make sure that that is a okay and that you didn't uh didn't mind it. It was fine and it doesn't have anything to do with your uh your trying to kiss them. I mean, it had nothing to do with all of that. But knows you can basically go back to your old ways of being friends and you never lose anything because down the line that might happen again whether both of you actually like it because that's going to sit in your mind between both of you so accidentally kiss your friend just do it you know uh like say that you Uh, if you want to know the dirt on how to kiss a friend while trying this, you know, or ask them how do you do this, or that, you know, ask them ways, and have them show you, that's not accidentally, but you are getting to the point in that. Uh, it's going to be really, a, you know, try a wet kiss or a sloppy kiss. But then you actually have succeeded on how that how, on kissing your friend and getting away with it. Um, you know, if you're you know out clubbing, you know how hard it is to shout in the club. So you got to sit. You're so freaking close to one another, face to face. You have that opportunity, take it, take it, take it, take it. So, this, I'm going to take a, a break here, the first break in the show. And when I return, I will finish up with how to accidentally kiss your friend or how to kiss your friend in general and get away with it to find out how it is. So, get that snack, get that drink. Come back, get relaxed. Meet me back here for more sex talk with Andra. Lennons and Hutch, a family owned company who specialize in soft and cozy, high quality, on trend colors and patents that never go out of style. Everything for your bed products at the best possible price. Linens and Hutch is able to do this by designing and working directly with expert manufacturers to cut out the middleman and pass the savings on to their customers, providing affordable luxury. I must say, my down alternative comforter from Linens and Hutch, along with my oh, bed sheet sets, matches up to actual sheets and down comforters at the higher prices 90 gsm microfiber hypoallergenic which is great for those with sensitive skin obviously snuggling up in a toasty soft bed is what i like and look forward to after a long day linens and hutch Provide fast and free shipping. They are so confident that you will love their bedding products that they offer a 100-day trial period. Yes, a 100-day trial period with money back guarantee. They know that you will be so satisfied that they are offering listeners 70% off in addition to the free shipping site wide the by just going to their website at https colon backslash backslash linensandhutch dot com backslash sex and using the code GSMC sex for and remember it's for the softest sheets 
ever. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, welcome back. I hope you got a nice big snack and drink so we can continue on with our topic matter of, you know, that relationship, bad relationship to get out of, or how to kiss a friend, which is, you know, all kinds of things that has to do with friends with benefits and things along that line, outside of actually having that sexual relationship and trying to get out of it. But we were on our last way in which to kiss a friend accidentally. Yeah, it's accidentally all right. You know, when we think about this kiss, we actually think of it as an improvisation because it's at the spirit of the moment, spontaneous, tend to when one of you was not expecting it, but when you get in there, you find out that you like it, so continue it, you know, but there are other ways to do it. Obviously, when you're, your friends, how do you say goodbye to your friend? You give them a hug, you give them a small kiss on the cheek. Oh, when they go to reach in for that cheek, just swap your cheek for your lips. It is done on TV. Why not in person? (laughs) And there you go. You get a kiss. And lo and behold, to your surprise, they probably liked it and want to continue it. So you get into deep, long kissing and then a little hanky-panky in the sack. Who's to say? Might have been something both of you really wanted for a while and you just thought it was you. So, now the last way in which to go about this is how to kiss a friend via text flirting. Um, that might be a little difficult. I gotta kiss them through the phone. I, I really believe sometimes when they come up with these things, they're not thinking correctly, but hey, let's do this. It involves, and this is how it is explained, a lot of late night text, which eventually lead to sizzling sexual chemistry between the both of you. Um, this particular way is basically foolproof, because as long as it takes your time and you can play it cool. There you get this wrong at this point, well, you better come up with a backup plan. That's all I have to say, because you messed that up. You might have messed that up all together, and it might, it really might ruin your friendship at that point. I mean, there are a lot of times when you shouldn't kiss front your friend uh one is when you're fe- you're being touchy feely uh because being touchy feely is gives a sign of flirting with this person that you like them it's the old sandbox rules come on you need a sandbox and there's somebody that you like and you're either throwing dirt at them or you're hitting them when you're little that's a sign of outwardly flirtation we get a little older, uh, it still works. Just, you know, just don't do sand. 
Okay, if you're going to play in the sandbox, play it together. Uh, this way, you know, you can kiss a friend. Cuddling up, holding hands, see if it, you know, it's going to cost you your friendship or uh, not. So you don't want to, you don't want to ruin that. Because our next topic is, are you more than friends? So... You know, another good way to do this is when your friends are asleep, they're not even expecting it because they're half days, they're out. Uh, but that might be really bad because when you start kissing them, they may just wake up and wonder what the heck you're doing. So it's not really a good thing, but this one's like 50-50. Because when people are sleeping, it's almost like they're drunk, they're halfway out of it. And they just go with the flow. Other than that, there are those people, if you do it, they immediately wake up. So there are ways to look at that one. Uh, take it really slow. Now when your friend is hung over, you may not, like, completely over and past the point of mere being drunk because you could be you could try it you start to look desperate other ways this might go wrong your friend might just throw up in your mouth Ugh, gross and i've heard horror stories about that so don't think it doesn't happen you know it's also a means of they're at a vulnerable state, you're taking advantage of them. You don't want to do that. You that's just they may not just not talk to you at all. So just remember that. Give respect to your friend. Okay, if you're too out drunk and just having a good old time and you're feeling good, well that's something else. But when you wait till they are extremely drunk have a hangover, and I think you've gone a little too far. And the time that you really probably don't want to kiss your friend. Granted, cons when you're consoling them, that's one of the ways to get that accidental kiss, but not when you, you know, when that person's grieving. Those feelings go a little bit more deeper. They're really, really hurt. At that point, to them, it may come back as you take an advantage of the situation. And your friend consoling because you had a bad day, or consoling because you broke up with someone, or or they someone did something to you. That's something else. For someone passing away, those are deeper feelings, and that advantage, you know, that's you that you can take advantage of a friend with that. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. You actually want to keep that friend, so. Please do respect their feelings in that respect. Um, so there are a lot of ways to go about that and find out what you're going to like in that person. Sneak in that kiss. Is it going to be more than that friend? Is it going to be uh, less than that? It's all about that and finding out if this is what you want between the two of you, if it's going to ruin that relationship somewhere down the line. You know, there are ways to find out if you're more than friends or just friends and finding out that equal balance. I mean, these are cute little things to get over it, but make sure you do them and you can get away with it. Because, again, you don't want to lose that friendship if you are, if that relation is good and you've known each other for years. And that's, you don't want them, you know, you don't want to give advantage of them. You don't want them to ha have taken advantage of you. Uh, there are, I mean, there are situations that that person you're looking for is standing right in front of you. It's that friend. It happens. It is there. You need, and if you want to go any further with that, you know, you kind of, kind of, sort of take it out slow, put some some ground rules, because once it goes sexual, 
a little difficult. Unless, of course, the both of you really didn't like it and you're in total agreement, go right back to being friends. And you're not going to... Matter of fact, there are times when you that does happen. And then you realize, oh my God, you just don't like each other in the bedroom. And that's one of the biggest things nowadays for a relationship to be successful is having that sexual compatibility. And if you go in there and you don't have it, that's like probably the best way to come back and say, okay, we're just going to stay friends. And it, it, I've seen it happen and work. So there are things like that that do happen between friends. And then they go back to being friends. But you get to that point and you realize, well, we are more than friends. You have more things in common. You have things that you want to do. You have kind of like goals together that you actually like, which you didn't realize that you had. They're a great companion. But finding out if they're a good lover makes them even a better companion. So you're going to get past that. And you're going to find out, you know, making sure it's not just that fact that, you know, you're not finding anyone, they're not finding anybody, and you're lusting the, over each other right now. So you want to know if there's that little bit in there. Are you going to be perfect for each other? Uh, and if you are, you're going to inevitably, inevitably, ew, inevitably big word, uh, fall in love. And you know that you started it from a good level. That person was your friend first. So remember that. You know that you, both of you call each other every day. So you already have that part down. You can, um, obviously in the beginning, all your other friends, everything that's going on could have just turned that into being completely, uh, people saying, oh, they're dating each other, or it becoming a uh, gossip thing, and finding out, you know, well, that's not what it is. So, but there are things that over time are the saying to you, like, you know, you guys would be great together. You you talk to each other, you've got a great friendship, you hang out, you do this, you just have that same personality. The two of you haven't looked at it that way, but that's what it is. But then you turn around, and because of this, you say, you know something? You stop, they stop putting that little thing in your head. I mean, you can sit on a bed and have a long conversation. You can sit, watch TV, have a conversation. And then you start to realize, maybe that's exactly what it is. There is a little bit more there. Sharing secrets and opinions. Another part of finding out if this is something more than friendship. I mean, you are so close that you finish each other's sentences. You know about each other's deepest, most darkest secrets for the most part. And, if, and you're not going to tell each other. I mean, you get excited when you talk about this because... You know, blindly, this is what you want to know about this person because you are you are attracted to this individual, but you've been putting it uh, into that, oh, it's a friendship type thing. And you've maintained it at that to the point where, you know, you've basically convinced yourself that's what it is and that it would not go any further than that. Well. Maybe that person is more than that. You know, you tell them, they tell you secrets, how they sleep in the bed, if they sleep nude, if they, you know, tried out different sexual things, if they, you know, they're talking about all different kinds of sexual relationships, they're talking about their old relationships and what they did together, what he did to the girl, or what she did to the girl, or he did to the guy. You know, they're telling you all of these things, you know, and they're also talking about, you know, you're talking about what the heck you were wearing while you were talking to each other, texting, uh, you turned it into a little bit of a flirting, you can, you know, in your mind, you're getting away with this, in their mind, or actually, really, in both of 
your minds. There's a hell of a lot more going on there. You know, so try to explore it to see if it would have gone any further than that. Another thing that is a dead giveaway that a friend is more to you than just a friend and that having that uh, hanky-panky in the sack and trying out that sexual endeavor or kissing, you know, like good stuff with them is probably going to work. You're over, the, Both of you actually are overprotective about each other. All right. So that that overprotection is feelings feelings that you really haven't looked at because you've been hanging out in this friendship because you are friends this is i mean there are people if you sit back and you say okay you're friends with some people a pretty good friends you've known for a long time and you're not protected over them but you're protected over this friend generally means you're more than a little bit more than good friends so and I mean, and if you could pick out each other's dates, you're actually going to pick out the worst date for them because you want them to continually come back to you. Come on, people. Open up your eyes. You're more than friends. And on that note, we are going to take our next break in the show and then come back to our lovely more than friends relationship and how to figure that one out. Come on, people. Not just finding out that you're just friends. So, replenish that drink, replenish that snack, come back and get relaxed again, and I will meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back, and thank you for tuning back in with me. Now, continuing on with our, is that person more than a friend, or are you just friends? Now, you got to ask yourself, is your friend very attractive? Obviously, you find them attractive because you wouldn't be asking yourself these questions. But if they're attractive, they're going to get a ton of dates. They're going to go out on dates while you sit back and wish they didn't. That jealousy and all of that and generally what you will do too is try and talk it down or say, you know, have really bad thoughts about that person or put in bad thoughts about that person into your friend's head because you like them. That is jealousy. That is the time when you realize, oh my goodness, I like that person for more than just a friend. You want to jump their bones. It happens. You know, 
if you finally convince yourself that that is not what it is, you need to get rid of all of that irritation, that jealousy, those, oh my God, that person, that, that, that person that they're going out tonight doesn't have to do that. That jealousy or things that, you know, churn with your stomach and you get angry over with that person because that is jealousy. Get rid of it. Nip it in the butt. Because if you're not going to take a move, how are they going to know that you like them to them? Your friends. And that's what they're telling this person they're going on a date with. But you see them and you're freaking out. Either act on those or don't act on those. It's completely up to you, but don't don't go out there and be jealous because you have no grounds to be jealous. You're spending holidays and weekends together all the time. You know, there's a group of friends that you have that you do meet up with when it's just you and that friend that go to the family's gathering or you go they go to your family's gathering on holidays and or weekends, whatever and the happy moments, well then you need to realize that there's a lot more going on than you think and you need to um find out what that is. Because tend to when your family's probably saying, Why don't you go out with them? You guys are so great. You know, which brings me to the next one, which is go out on a date with each other. You know, you're going to go out and this time when you go out, yeah, you know about each other's deepest secrets or whatever. This might be where you can put a little more into that. And then that flirting becomes the kissing because, you know, you already know about each other, but really get to know each other at this point. Uh, it's how you do this. I mean, you guys go out a lot together, but you're going out to have a good time. It is more now of let's plan to do this. You know, where you're going to get, do the extra step now. You're going to get dressed up. You're going to impress each other. Because now it's, the, the game has changed. You know, because in the end, 10 to 1, this, this evening is going to end in major kissing. And probably a rop in the sack. Because you already know each other. It's not like, oh my God, it's our first. Well, it is your first date, but you know each other. So you could probably go a little further with after date. Whereas if it's the first time you've met this person, the first time you're going on a date with them, you kind of like, eh, no. Granted, I'm not saying that that does not happen. It does get the sex out of the way. See if you're actually going to like it. But sometimes when you do that, you're putting the horse before the carriage and then it will become lost because hey this person gave it up on the first night let's go out again because you're going to get sex again it's as simple as that and that's not what you want you're not finding out if this is who you want to be with or not you're actually making it worse for yourself so look at it that way next way is to give each other exclusive pet names uh, if you have a pet name for each other, obviously there's a surge of affection there because you don't give somebody a pet names because pet names are personal and they're very affectionate. So if you're giving a friend a pet name, well, I hate to tell you this, it's a little bit more than just friends there. I mean, if it was a friend, uh, a name that that person had as a nickname and it just kind of sort of followed them throughout their adulthood. Well, it's not a pet name that you two made up. It's something that this individual was given when they were little and it's just part of them now overall. Pet name is something personal for you to them and to them to you. So, 
next you have extreme loyalty to each other there's loyalty and friendships don't get me wrong but when it comes to up and above that loyalty in the friendship well you you stand up for each other no matter what they could have literally done something bad you would stand up with that person I mean, if they were just a friend, you'd turn around and say, well, they're just my friend. I don't know much about it. Why are you telling me? And instead, you actually defend them. So you're loyal. And it's a little bit more friends when you get to that. You may already be beyond that with this particular friend. You're in love with them, and you just haven't even realized it. So remember these little tidbits when trying to figure out if this person is more than a friend because in the end you may be having that person who is going to be with you for the rest of it, that partner may have been sitting right in front of you and you didn't even know it so there's ways to do that and ways to you know stop questioning yourself about it i mean that friend to lover line sometimes is a little blurred because you do have those feelings but they're not the intimacy because there's no sex in the mix but yet the two of you are doing all these things that partners would do for each other so you really need to take a step back and just move it to the next uh level which would be sexually so remember that you need to know if you're falling for that friends and if you are how can you tell you know very very important a lot of people have this situation, but finding out where that separation in the bond of friendship and love is, is probably the hardest thing, because you know it will hurt if you're no longer friends. Uh, and then you'll start uh, doubting yourself, why didn't I do this? I really like them. And now look, that person has them, because now they've moved on. And a little bit of your friendship is taken with you. So, you know, that little crush that the both of you feel, down the line one of them is going to come out and say, well, you know, you never acted on those. I wanted more. It's not a way of making you feel bad. It's a way of just, you know, why didn't you do it? Well, mostly friends don't know that. you got to, you know, kind of sort of take that step back and look at it that way. Uh, and finding out if this is who you want and what you want. As simple as that. Uh, nowadays, it's a little bit more uh, easier and a lot more ways to get in to that because nowadays a lot of people are taking it slow. And that's what's the first thing when you're going to go and meet somebody nowadays. You're going to go slow. I think there is a bit of a tug of war with the old fashioned ways and a tug of war with the new ways and those relationships and bonds that are built today are having difficulties in, you know, making that decision and going through that, how to move that on. But however, you know, there are ways that you can do this and we may start out with that kiss. But now we want to know how we're going to do a little bit more with that arousal in there. You can get a girl to kiss you and the way you do it is just arouse her sexual peak. And this goes the opposite way. Even though the kissing, we are all nervous over that first kiss because 
that is the telltale sign if we're going to stick with them or not. Or they're going to talk about us and say we're terrible. <laughs> Tell you you're terrible. Um, but there are some ways that you can get either, you know, that prospective partner or that friend to kiss you by arousing them. And you can't go wrong with that because both of you are really, you really want it. Uh, you got to navigate around. Usually you just sit there and let that person start kissing you and you go, you know, let them lead the way. But girls never, this is with females, generally never will initiate a kiss. Nowadays, that is so totally the opposite. But you want to make it show them that it is okay to go in there and say, you know, go in there and grab that kiss. It's once you get in there and you start messing around, or you could just really be just sitting there and the two of you are just playing with each other's fingers. Those little signs we used to do when we were a kid, if you rub the palm of your partner's hand, it tells them, it lets them know that you want to go to bed with them. Um, little things like that. If you, I think, you know, you're doing that little pinky hold or you're sitting there watching the movie and you're getting really intimate and you're playing around by just rubbing the back of her neck or that, per that person's back, neck or whatever or their arm and it's a totally arousing them beyond the point where they can't handle it and they really want you to go that next step because right now you're arousing the heck out of them which is a lot for them you're building up that chemistry that sexual chemistry and then you go into make your move with the kiss because at that point you are they got you got the person in the mood just get into that deed and first way we start is through kissing so then we'll get some alone time with that individual okay where you can just sit the both of you no distractions no cell no no from the cell phone you're totally not even listening to it you're getting cozy you may be in a dimly lit room or you may just be sitting watching movies romantic movies at that but find that you know little cozy time alone number one this should be number one but it is not don't ask her to kiss you mm -mm 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 -mm. granted that is a way in which we just go in and we say kiss me or can I kiss you we as females or as that partner need to feel that there's that little bit or that sexual attraction in there in order to go beyond that and to kiss you so with that we are going to take our final break in the show so completely up to you if you want to get more snack or drink but do remain relaxed because now we're getting a little sexually heated here if you want to masturbate go for it up to you uh, heaven only knows, but I will meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra to finish out the show. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar.
thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, continuing on, and welcome back out there. Continuing on with our subject matter, you know, we're trying to make those friends into more than just friends, or try to steal kisses, or whatever the case may be, but we did leave off on ways to get a, you know, that person to kiss you, and doing it without even asking, but there are ways to do it, because we are sexual beings, especially females, if we're turned on and horned out, and you are sexually arousing us, what comes next is the kiss, a little bit backwards, sometimes, other times, well, you want to start with the kiss, and then down to the bed, but, which brings us to number three, which I believe is where I left off last, just to go over it again, which is to sit close and flirt sexually, and, you know, it's finding that excuse to go and sit near them, like you're showing them something, or, uh, you're trying to be discreet by it all over, you know. You know, you can get right to the sexual right away. You can talk about it. Talk about how she is, about the first time you saw them, or whatever. It is completely up to you. Getting you all warmed up, and, you know, now you got the attention. Then, let's get a little flirty. Why not? So, moving right alone in our quest to the kiss of a friend without actually asking them to kiss you. Go and touch that person every so often, now and then. Now, remember, if you're just sitting there and you just sit at the table and you stop flicking a finger or, you know, touch them on the shoulder or you find an excuse to do that, do it. You are, if you're touching softly and you're playing around, you are literally going to turn that person on. You know, it's just that little bit of, you know, even if the hand's on there and you like slightly, lightly hit their hand or whatever the case may be, but it's really light touch, you're getting their attention and just that mere touch, If you, especially if you're sitting somewhere where, like, the overall mood is somewhat romantic, somewhat, you know, different. Let's put it that way, where, like, really anything can go. That would really, really work. And knowing how to uh, do that, very important. But moving on. Don't laugh or try to be funny. Hmm. Sometimes, okay, this goes either way. If you're laughing with a person and joking, that's a turn on in some respects. Okay, so I don't know why people would think that it wouldn't be, but it is. It doesn't kill the mood. It actually makes it that much more fun to get to that. Like, wow, they made me feel this way. However, in some situations, it becomes with that, you're making them funny. That's all they're going to see you as. So, if you actually set the the mood or the the conversation tone, shall I say, if you're talking so- softly, that person's going to talk so softly. If you're laughing, that person's going to laugh. So, if you're trying to be serious, do go with the soft speaking first and you know talking lightly and whatever find a ways just to come behind and say hey look at that person over there or look at those two they need to get a room put it in that direction to see these different things because obviously the next thing is getting that person in the mood especially that girl uh obviously 
if she's laughing, you guys are just fooling around, not doing anything, that's where your mind is. You might want to stop, just hold hands. And just play around with the fingers. Don't do anything major, just those little soft touches, which are going to be all that helpful for you in the long run, because that's going to be that one that basically is going to turn that individual on and change that whole flirt to sexual tension and this is where we need to go to you know especially if you're you're dating someone or you just met someone you want to uh if you have if you're holding their hand play with their fingers or play with their hands stroke the palm or their arm or something like that. I mean, you could be just sitting there watching a movie and you're lightly just caressing a shoulder or something or putting your finger that goes down the back. These are sexual turn-ons. Use them. So get them, get that individual to come completely down and get a total different aspect and then it becomes that sexual thing. So that's what you want. Obviously, tiny kiss on the cheek is always such a nice little opening or a nice little start because once you start kissing on the cheek and you realize they're receptive of it, continue to go down the neck, then the back. That sex, that sexual feeling is just surging to come through because now it's it's going throughout their whole entire body. You want to really sit down, oh, kind of work that along, you know, and keep it going. And if you want, if it's a, you know, a friend and you want a relationship with her and she's or him, and they're very receptive to what you are doing right then and there, start to talk about that. Have that conversation. Um, you know, say some good things about you're really happy to have met her or him, uh, and to know them for what they already know of you. So it's really, go a little bit when you're doing it, Look at that person. Go closer. You could be sitting there and they could be just leaning up against you. Kiss her on the cheek. Then she's going to, she or he is going to turn back and smile at you. And that's like the, you know, to go. I think the whole thing with this, you ever see on the movies or if anybody's ever told you that if you turn back, if you're looking behind you and as you're walking away and that person turns back, that means that you have got that person. All right. So that they were, they wanted to know. So that's where that comes in. Now you can always put, if you don't want to, you know, kiss her on the cheek or him on the cheek, it could be where you just do the, uh, the back of the hand. Uh, those are old fashioned, but they do work very much so. I mean, with you doing this, you need to watch their reactions, see what kind of response that you get. What is the reaction of that soft kiss? Are they blushing? Um, are they looking at you and say, what the, what are you doing? Obviously, if they're blushing, you know, they're liking it. They tell you, what are you doing? Then don't do it again. Because you have just told that they have just told you that they don't want to be touched by you in that manner by you. Or they're uncomfortable for that. Playing with their hair, fingers, all of these things. Keep them talking. Keep it flirty and sensual, sexual. And just keep it going. And then when you got this moving right along, kiss them again. On the cheek, if not the cheek. Actually, this time you may be able to get away get away with the cheek. So instead of doing it on the hand, move it up to the cheek. Because it might work at that point in time. 
again, back up, see the reaction. Because you're really working off of the reaction that's coming along with it. If she's, or she, he or she is like looking into you with those starry eyes and those bedroom slits. Move in. Put a soft kiss on the lips. Obviously, back away and see how it is. Or even just back away and act like it was just that friendly kiss to say goodbye. Tender one, they're going to push you back, pull you back in, or too afraid to do something because they're not sure how, or, you know, if you're thinking the same thing. So, blushing, always a good thing. Because then you can generally just go straight to the kissing on the lips, which is where you want to be. Don't break that sense, you know, that sexual tension. If you're that close and you're kissing, move away just a bit to look. Just tend to when they're going to look at you and say, what'd you stop for? You know, they're getting really horned out right now. It's not like you guys have known each other, so you're past that get to know me stage. You're moving a little bit forward. So she'll definitely, or he'll definitely kiss you back. Uh, this is where you need to be. And this is how you're going to get to that next stage. This is, like I said, nowadays, you might just go right for the bedroom after you go back into that kiss because that kiss was good. The both of you wanted it. You already know each other, your friends. You don't need to sit there and say, oh, jeez. Um, I have to go. No, 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 no. But with today, in today's little um, world of sex, sex, like I said earlier, is being done and being getting taken out of the way. Because if you like the uh, sex, for the most part, you'll stick around, which is sad. Um, but true because now all of this has led up to trying to go and actually date that friend because you don't want to uh, ruin that friendship if it doesn't go well you know uh Obviously, for the most part, and they will, everybody will say this, if you have a male friend, doesn't matter how close they are to you, guys will tell you this, they're looking at you for sex. That could be right and that could be wrong. It's really how you define what that relationship is. Because there's usually some sort of, um, Attraction and chemistry, if we're getting to this point where you want to kiss and get sexually active. So think about it. So, you already got the friendship in there, which is what everybody tells you to start that relationship off with. Work on that lovely chemistry. You know, give the attention that that person so deserves. Uh, cause you know, this is where it starts. This will bring you closer with each other, which is a very good. Make eye contact. And I don't mean just the eye contact when you look at each other and say, uh-oh, did you see that? Literally, get, take eye contact and um, look deep. Because that's really, really, like as they say, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Well, this might be what you're trying to do here in this situation. Looking into that person's soul, get mesmerized. Flirt with that friend. You know, see how far that goes. Because this builds that little chemistry, which will push on with that sexual attraction. Because being flirty and being, you know, not having that in the soul gaze and stuff, you might lose it again. 
Obviously get touchy-feely. Just reviewing some things here. Touchy-feely. Because now you are, you know, you're friends with that person. Stuck in a little, you know, touchy-feely. Little ones. Not anything major. Let them start to think. And when you get, if it does get to a point where it is awkward, back away. Because that means that at that point, it's not reciprocal between you. And you don't want to lose that bad friend. Obviously, if you've been hanging out with everybody together, uh, change it up a bit and spend some time alone together. Uh, let your friend know that they are desirable to you. So make sure you're sending those right signals or talk about you know, friends do it all the time. They talk about each other and what they like about them and everything else, especially men and women. So there are different things. This one's cute. Find an excuse to go out on a date. And I don't mean a date, a real date. So you can, uh, you know, you might want to to work on that. If, say, the date is just going to the flea market, but you've done that as actual friends, find something else to go on a date with. Okay, so. Uh, and then when you find out that both of you like each other, sex is good. Uh, they haven't rejected you. Pop that little question in and say, you know, would you like to, I want to be a little bit more than friends with you. And 10 to 1, if they're reciprocating everything else, then they're going to reciprocate that as well. So, with that all said and done, this is the end of my show. Remember to practice safe sex, if not for your partner, for yourself, and vice versa. If you are trying anything new sexually, educate, communicate, and consent, please. Very, very, very important. And as you see, usual, I thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast. Brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I do ask that you subscribe to the show and write an awesomely great review. Because it helps me. And it also helps the GSMC Podcast Network. Also, in your quest of subscription, please do like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are there. Leave some comments, some things that you'd like to hear discussed on the show. Hey, there might be some things out there I have never heard of, but yeah, I'll talk about them. So think about it. And thank you again. And have a great night. And stay safe. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. <laughs>